when we talk of uh, cash flow statements, remember, at the end of the day, there are those restrictions that uh, exist outside in the corporate world. For instance, there's the rule that you can never pay dividends, you can never pay dividends out of borrowings. If, for example, you are making losses, losses, losses like that, and then you have a very bad uh, shareholders who would want through thick and thin to receive dividends and then you get some directors going to borrow to come and pay them it's never allowed one of the advantages of putting up a cash flow statement is really to be able to show the sources of uh, our cash flows uh, in terms of uh, three three activities through three grouped activities. So we have here cash flow from operations. This is the cash flow that we like. Any company that makes positive uh, cash flows from operations, the net cash flows from operations are positive. That is a very good, good company. And then we have, uh, if you can remember, cash flows from who? From investing activities out of our other investments outside there. How much cash flows are we able to get from our investing activities and then lastly we have cash flows from where our financing activities financing activities so the financing activities of course we shall be looking at the share capital right the debt instruments etc 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 so today i would want us to look at uh, this group cash flow statement, and uh, because of course uh, time may not be enough, I would want us to look at uh, a group cash flow statement specifically how to handle cash flow from operating activities. Cash flow from operating activities. So we have here cash flow, cash flow from operating activities activities and remember ladies and gentlemen in this case here whenever the examiner like in most cases whenever the examiner is silent about the method that, that you should use to develop your cash flow statement you shall always use the indirect method we shall always use the indirect method and is 7 tells us what to start with and the indirect method is there anybody who is able to remember what we are supposed to start with here, somebody. The first item and the operating activities and the indirect method, is there somebody who can remind us which item are we supposed to start with? Which item are we supposed to start with? Profit before tax, you are right. Profit before tax. So you're supposed to start with profit before. Profit before tax. Profit before tax. So before I start looking at a question, ladies and gentlemen, I would want us to have a, a quick performer there. A quick performer uh, statement, just capturing those items that we should always bring to our operating activities. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that uh, when we talk of uh, operating profit, operating profit is profit before interest and tax. It is profit before interest and what year tax. So the first adjustment that I will do, I can see this one. To make this one an operating profit, I need to add back what year interest for me to make it a PBIT. You see tax, tax has not yet been adjusted. Tax has not yet been adjusted. But you see they have already deducted interest and they're not supposed to do that really, really because at the end of the day, what we want is to start from here. Profit uh, before interest and tax. So we are saying here, come and add the interest for the year. The interest for the year, in most cases nowadays, they call it the finance what? The finance cost. The interest or finance cost for the year, which you will get from the P and the L, profit and loss statement of the company. Great, so I'm adding there. Now you guys who were in my class, could you kindly tell me the other adjustments now that I should be able to pass here very fast? I'm waiting to read your comments from you great students. So now I have the PBIT, but you see I don't want profits, I want cash flows. So how do I change this very fast here to cash flows? I can see Steve telling me, Mualimu, come and add back the non-cash items. 
the non-cash items. So add back the non-cash items. So non-cash items like which one? Like, you know, they are telling you to add back, in this case here, depreciation. They are telling you to come and add any non-cash item that you guys are aware of. We add any impairment, what here? Loss of goodwill, the impaired uh, goodwill. Is there any other non-cash item that you guys uh, are able to remember? Yes, we have loss on what year? Disposals. You know, when you dispose an, an asset and you make a loss, really, there is no, that loss is not a cash item. So in this case here, add a loss on disposal, add a loss on what year? Disposal of any asset, including subsidiaries, of any asset, including subsidiaries you add. And uh, when you are disposing these subsidiaries, when you are disposing these assets, so including sub, when you're disposing these assets, if you make a profit, what should you do? Any profit on disposal, you less, you less profit on what year? On disposal of assets, including what your subsidiaries, like that. Then I can see what Sabrina, Sabrina is telling me, that I need to come and, you know, in this, these people must have included investment incomes. Investment incomes. So investment incomes have been included here, right, in arriving at this figure. But you see, we want just profit out of our operations, profit out of our sales, right? So in this case, you need to come under less what year? You need to come under less. You need to come under less. Any investment income. Less investment. Less investment income. Like rental incomes. Income from associates. Income from associates. ETC. They are not supposed to be here. You're supposed to come and do what year? You're supposed to come and subtract them. Somebody is asking what DPM stands for. Sorry for that. This stands for depreciation. This stands for depreciation, like that. So, of course, when we go to a, an exam question, we shall be able to get what we shall be able to get, ladies and gentlemen, we shall be able to get more and more items. This adding, 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 adding like that. We shall be able to get uh, more and more items, but for now, let's leave it there. It doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. There is something else that we need after we have been able to make these adjustments. There is something else that we need to come and uh, bring on board. Is there somebody who is, who is able to remember what else we're supposed to bring on board here? Is there anybody who is able to remember what else we're supposed to bring on the table? Uh, don't talk about this anymore. This one here, of course, will be dictated there with the working capital. When we go to the questions, we shall be changes in working capital. Changes in working capital. So changes in working capital. Changes in working capital. So when we talk of working capital, we have got three items. Three items that we have to look at. Which items are these? Which items are these? The three items. The three items which constitute our working capital. So we have inventory, we have uh, receivable, we have uh, payables. Thank you very much. So I'll come and write them first of all here. So we have inventory, we have uh, receivable, receivable, we have a uh, payable, payable. Now, if, 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 if I remember, if my memory uh, serves me very well, there is a shortcut that I gave you to handling this. There is a language that I gave you to handling this. Is there somebody who can remember that language? CO, that for payable, always you use commanding officer. Receivable and inventory, you use what we call what here? OC, OC, OC. If you remember this, then you are headed to heaven straight away. For the new students, ladies and gentlemen, this basically means that for inventory, I'll be taking opening minus closing. Opening minus closing. You take the inventory, opening inventory, minus the closing inventory. The same with this receivable, because the two are assets, current assets. Opening minus what here? Closing. But for payable, you'll be taking closing minus opening. Right? 
right? So I'll come, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, I'll come and I have my figures here, depending on what I get here. For example, OC, opening minus closing gives me a negative, I write negative. If this gives me a positive, I leave it like positive like that, the same. So here, when I use the OC and CO, I'll be good to go. Right. And then I'll come and consolidate everything here. When I consolidate everything here, I'll be able to get what we call cash flow from operations. So I'll be able to get what we call cash flow from operations. You'll allow me to come and write here. Cash flow from operations. So we have cash flow from operations, from operations like that cash flow from operations. But you see, the moment I get cash flow from operations, it doesn't end there. I still need to make some two payments. I need to make some payments from cash flow from operating, uh, operating operations. What are my operating activities I mean? I'm supposed to pay two things out of this. Are you able to remember those two things? Masi Wambua tells me I have to pay tax, tax paid. I have to pay tax. And then number two, I must pay what year? Interest. Number two, I must pay interest. Of course, if you wish, you can as well go and pay dividends here, but uh, the current uh, standard is running away from that. It is telling us that you know what? Dividends in this case, they belong to investing activities. If you've invested in a company shares, you'll be paid dividends. And if, for example, other investors have invested in your company, then we call that one what year? A model financing. When we pay them dividends, we shall be able to do what year? Adjust them, that under, under financing. So don't bring dividends here. That used to be the old school. Under the old school, if you remember the old school, we used to come and say less the old school. When I used to teach this financial reporting in the old days of 15 years ago, we used to come and say less here, the famous TED. We used to say like that, less TED where T in this case here is, is tax, I is interest, and then of course we have what we call dividends here. But now this D has been removed. Nowadays we talk of tax, not the tax in the income statement. This is the tax paid. And then we have interest done, what your interest paid, like that, like that. And then ultimately you'll be able to get what we call the net, cash flow from operating activities, net cash flow from operating activities. So are we together up to there? Are we together up to here? Are we together? Are we together? Are you able to see my board? Are you able to see my board? Are you able to see my board? Ikosawa, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Now let's look at a past paper question, which is uh, advanced financial reporting. Uh, advanced financial reporting. Uh, I would want us straight away to look at uh, this question that was tested here. This question of uh, November 2019. So November 2019, November 2019, November 2019, question number four. Once you get it, please uh, alert me. November 2019, question number four. Advanced financial reporting, if you're doing financial reporting of the intermediate level, this is not your class. Stay away from this, this is not your class. Your class, you know, your, your cash flow statements at that level, they are very basic. They're very basic. They're very basic. Yeah, like I can see one has dropped already, which is very good. If you are here and you belong to the intermediate level, please wait for your turn. Wait for your turn. This is too heavy for you, but very easy for any student who is in the advanced level. In the advanced level. So uh, uh, have you been able to get the question? Have you gotten the question? Have you gotten the question? Have you gotten the question? They haven't yet told me whether they have gotten the question. November 2019. Question number four. Yes, thank you very much. And if you haven't gotten it, I've shared my screen with you. Are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see this question on my screen? Are you able to see my screen in November? The one that I'm reading here. Are they able to see my screen? They're not giving me any response. They're not giving me any response. 
Yes, visible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What I need to do perhaps is to increase it a little bit. Great. That's look, that looks much better. Now, we are told here the following financial statements re relate to Makongeni Group for the year ended 31st October 2019. So remember, for you to be able to do a cash flow statement for the balance sheet, you must be given two consecutive years balance sheets. Two consecutive years balance sheet. But income statement, you only need income statement for one year. Income statement, you need the income statement for the current year. Income statement, you need the income statement for the current year. I hope you're together there. So balance sheet, statement of financial position, two of them, current year and the balance sheet of last year, like that. So what are they telling me, ladies and gentlemen? They're telling me, not number one, during the year, Makongi Limited acquired 80% of the ordinary share capital of Itazaki Limited, paying a cash consideration of 6 million, 6,000 million. The NCI was measured at its fair value of 1360 million at the date of acquisition. The fair values of the NCI of the net assets of Razaki, Razaki Limited, as at the date of acquisition, comprise the following. Property, plant, and equipment, we can see those things. Note number two, during the year, Makongeni Limited also disposed of its entire 60% ordinary shareholding in another subsidiary called Salama Limited. The subsidiary had been acquired several years ago for a cash consideration of 2,400. The NCI was measured at its fair value of 1,280 as at the date of acquisition and the fair value of Salama Limited net assets were like that. Goodwill on acquisition of Salama Limited had not uh, suffered any impairment. At the date of disposal, the net assets of Salama Limited had carrying values in the consolidated statement of financial position as set below. Blah, 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 note four, not affecting me for now. So required, they want me to give them a consolidated statement of cash flows for the Makongeni Group for the year ended 31st October 2019 using the direct method in accordance with the International Accounting Standard IS7 statement of cash flows. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that I will do if you give me this kind of a question, because it's a group cash flow statement, the first thing I'll do is to compute goodwill of the two subsidiaries. Goodwill of Razaki and the goodwill of who? Salama. So the first thing I'll do is to compute goodwill of Razaki and the goodwill of Salama at acquisition, at acquisition. Do I have enough time really to complete this question? Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm only doing the operating statement and then we'll agree, we'll agree about financing and cash flow. Financing and operating, uh, financing and investing, great. So I would want to do goodwill, goodwill of my two subsidiaries, goodwill of Razaki and the Salama. I know for the students that I have been teaching severally, these guys are so good in this. I'm so sure they can get this very fast, very fast for the two companies. Don't separate them. Don't do like uh, 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 separately, no. We can handle this. So when I want to get goodwill, who can get us started, ladies and gentlemen? What is the first thing that I should pick up here for goodwill? What is the first item? The first item, please be fast in typing. Time is not enough for us. When they talk of goodwill, there are those things I must always think about. Consideration, thank you very much. Purchase consideration. So we talk of uh, consideration, consideration, paid by the parent and the consideration paid by NCI, NCI. Remember this is at what year? At acquisition, at acquisition. And remember for NCI, we are looking at fair value of NCI at acquisition. Thank you very much. So the parent for Razaki, the parent for Razaki paid how much? Let's see, the parent for Razaki, we are told here the parent for Razaki, during the year, Makongen Limited acquired 80% of the ordinary share capital of Razaki, it's supposed to be Razaki Limited, paying a cash consideration of 6,000. Uh, 6, we leave out the million. 
So in this case here for Azaki, the parent paid 6,000 there, and then we have the NCI down here. The NCI holding was measured at its fair value of 1360 at the date of acquisition. So 1360, thank you so much. So I've been able to take care of the consideration. Those two I'm supposed to add, and then I'm supposed to come down here and subtract what? Could you kindly tell me what I'm, I'm supposed to subtract down here? What am I supposed to subtract down here? We don't take the group share. Remember, this is full, full method. Full method because it has got parent and NCI, NCI maturity. This full method. So you can't talk of group share. No, we simply less the net assets, the total net assets of the subsidiary. So less net assets, less net assets, not at disposal, net assets at acquisition at acquisition. So net assets at acquisition, what do we have here for net assets at acquisition? Net assets at acquisition, they're telling us here, they're telling us something here, the fair value of net assets of Razaki Limited at the date of acquisition comprised the following. These were the net assets and I can see I'm interested in the total. The total year is 59 what year? 59.60. The total year is 59.60. The total is 59.60. The total is 59.60 like that. So this I'm supposed to subtract. So could you kindly come here and give me the goodwill? Give me the goodwill, the goodwill at acquisition. Give me the goodwill at acquisition. So they're telling me, according to Rezi, when I acquired this, this at acquisition, the goodwill was 1400, 1400. How about this other company called Salama? Go to Salama, go to Salama. And by the way, even if I'm trying to beat time, it's good that uh, you get to understand the concepts. Up to now, are we together or am I too fast for you people? Are we together? Are you able, are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great. 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 Now, there's a gentleman from there. There's a gentleman from there. What are we told here about Salama? We are told something about Salama. During the year, Makongeni Limited also disposed of its entire 60% ordinary shareholding in Salama Limited. The subsidiary had been acquired several years ago for a cash consideration of 2,400 million. Ah, the subsidiary had been acquired several years ago at 2,400. Great. So I can see the purchase consideration of the parent. During acquisition, the consideration of the parent was 2,400. I love this. Okay, so we are told here, the MCI was measured at its fair value of 1280 at the date of acquisition. I mean, I love this kind of examiners. I normally see students failing in advanced financial reporting, getting a fail in AFR, and I sympathize with them. They don't know how easy this paper is. This is the easiest paper in CPA that you can do, actually with your eyes closed and you still pass and you still pass. I'll come back to that, right? So we are told here the fair value of Salama, NCI was 1280, 1280, 1280, so I'll just come and fix like that. And then we have net assets of Salama. We are told here that the fair value of Salama's net assets was 29.20, was 29.20. 2920. Great. So this one I'm subtracting. So could you kindly come and give me the goodwill, the goodwill, the goodwill of Salama at acquisition, not at the date of disposal, at acquisition. So at acquisition, we are being told is what year? 760, like that. 760, like that. Great, 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 great. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. Let me go back to the question again. I'm told here, Goodwill on acquisition of Salama Limited had not suffered any impairment. Had not suffered any impairment. So, meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that for Salama Limited, the goodwill that I had at acquisition here is the same as goodwill at disposal. 
no changes. How about uh, this other new company called Razaki? Was there any impairment of goodwill that was suffered? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So we are told here up here, uh, note number one. So they never told us about the amount of goodwill that was impaired. That was impaired. That was impaired. No worries at all. No worries at all. There is another way that I could use to get goodwill impaired, both for who, you, you know, for like Razaki, they haven't told us whether goodwill was, was impaired. But you see, even if they tell you that goodwill of Razaki is not impaired and the goodwill of Salama is not impaired, you should never assume that eh, the parent had only these two subsidiaries. Remember, these were subsidiaries that we did, that we transacted over in the current year. Most probably, it's a bigger group. It could be having, in this case here, other, subsi other subsidiaries. So then what am I supposed to do for goodwill? What I'm supposed to do to be able to get goodwill in there, I need to do a T-account, but I hate T-accounts. They don't make sense to me. So goodwill impaired, goodwill impaired. What I'll do, I'll come and look at the opening, opening minus uh, closing. Go to the statement of uh, financial position. It's an asset. It's an asset. It's an asset. It's an asset. So you can see this asset. We have an asset here called goodwill. So could you kindly, from this goodwill, could you kindly give me the opening balance of goodwill from the information given here? Could you kindly help me interpret? What is the opening balance of goodwill? Again, you'll get students here confusing. You'll get students confusing. The opening balance of goodwill is how much? No, they're not talking to me. I'm not feeling these students. I don't know why. I don't know why. 7,400, are you sure? Students really confused? Yes, yes, you're right. It is for the first year, the oldest year given here is 2018. So this is opening balance, this is closing balance. So you're right. So it should be 7,400 minus 77, 20. Thank you very much. So it should be 7,400 is the opening minus, minus 77, minus 77, 20. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to listen and listen to me very carefully. Listen and listen to me very carefully. You know, there is goodwill in the year which came, which came, which came to the company, to the group, to the group because of Razaki that was acquired. So whenever you have got goodwill, I can call it goodwill acquired during the year, you always add it to the opening stock. So in this case here, plus 1,400, like that. And then, of course, this is goodwill that left us. This 760 is goodwill over a disposed subsidiary. Goodwill over a disposed subsidiary, you've got two ways. Either you come and subtract it directly at, say, minus 760, right? Or you simply make it to be part of closing. Goodwill over a disposed subsidiary, you make it to be part of the closing. You add it together with the closing goodwill, right? So in this case here, plus 700, what here, somebody? Plus 760. Plus 760. So what have we discovered there? You take the opening goodwill and add any acquired goodwill. Minus the closing goodwill, you add any goodwill that uh, is associated with a subsidiary that, that was dispo disposed. A subsidiary which was disposed, right? I know this will make sense when I do another question, but could you kindly, in this case, you give me this goodwill that was impaired? Kindly give me the goodwill which was impaired. So goodwill impaired is 320. Now, that is the only working that I will do. After I finish doing this goodwill impaired account, the next thing that I will do, ladies and gentlemen, is to write a big title, which so many accountants are so good. This one is something that I normally see so many students doing it very well. I've never seen any student who misses uh, this one. You know, they know the name of the group is Makongeni Group. That one they write, screaming in screaming letters, They'll come and tell you, Makongeni, what year? Makongeni group. Makongeni group. Makongeni group. That they'll write in capital letters. That one, they never fail. 
That one, they never failed right. That one, uh, so well. So most of them who write, uh, have marked uh, Advanced FR for so long. I know most of them write that name very well. Makongeni group, very nicely. Makongeni. Makongeni group. Uh, statements of cash flows. Cash flows for the year, for the year, for the year ending. I know you can see the year there, whatever, 2019. They underline that very well. But now, unfortunately, unfortunately, that may be just because of luck. We have, we have to know how to do these things properly. We must know how to do these things properly, right? Now, as a gentleman, after they write like this, down here, there is nothing they write. Go to another page. Again, they write for another question like, like that. And then at the end of the booklet, they write a very, um, is, uh, is it good or embarrassing statement that God bless the work of my hands. Which work? Writing only the titles. Which work? Which work? International disaster. But for us, ladies and gentlemen, we are bright students. It's in direct method. When it's in direct method, we know how to get started. So we have here the operating activities. Operating activities, what do we have, my friends? So operating activities, we start with the profit before tax. So profit before tax. So are you able to see the profit before tax? Is there somebody who can see the profit before tax? Is there anybody who can see the profit before tax? Go back to the income statement. So profit before tax. Yes, profit before tax. What figure am I seeing here? Yeah. Is it 4460? Profit before tax, 4460, isn't it? 4460, thank you very much, 4460. So 4460. The first thing that I'll come and add back is the finance cost. So the first thing that I'll come and add back, I have only 20 minutes, but I'll be able to finish this very well. So add the finance cost. Add the finance cost. So finance cost, ladies and gentlemen, are you able to see the finance cost really? In this question, are you able to see the finance cost? In this question, are you able to see the finance cost? I know you have the paper. Are you able to see the finance cost, the interest basically? The interest basically finance cost 140. We are adding it back. We are adding it back. We are adding it back. So add finance cost of 140. Thank you so much. So from there, what next should we, should we think about? The non-cash items, isn't it? The non-cash items, and we shall be able to add them up very first. The non-cash items. So come and add the non-cash items. So non-cash items I'll start with the depreciation. I'll start with the depreciation in the question paper. Are you able to see the deep? I wish I was not sharing this thing. Sharing this thing wastes time. Depreciation, of course, it can't be here. Depreciation, yes, look at note number four. Depreciation of 1540 million was charged during the year, right? So we take it the way it is. So depreciation of 1540, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have uh, any gain, any gains, any gains, any gains, any gains, any gains, like gain on disposal of assets, gain on disposal of subsidiaries, or losses that is? So if I look at uh, this financial statement of mine up here, I can see gain on disposal of subsidiary. Gain on disposal of subsidiary. Are you able to see the 400? Are you able to see the 400? Are you able to see the 400? They're not seeing it because they're not talking to me. They're not talking to me. So gain, gain on disposal of the subsidiary 400. Of course, it's again, we are doing the opposite. We are subtracting. Thank you so much. We are subtracting. Thank you so much. Right. So of course, I know there will be gain in uh, 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 selling uh, this. Let, let's just read this from the question itself. Like this particular area, I can't see. Ah, I can see something very interesting here, share of profit of associate. This is an investment income. This is, on, is an investment income. We have to remove it from operations. We have to remove this from operations. 
So we have here share of uh, share of profit from associate, from associate. I'll just tell the examiner because I must also demonstrate broad and a deep understanding of the subject. I have to show deep and of course, uh, broader knowledge of the subject. I'll come and write for him here, investment income. Then I'll scare the examiner. I'll scare the examiner. I don't know whether these cursive examiners are normally scared. Good attempts to scare them. So how much? So we have here how much? In this case here, we have a share of profit 460. If I'm not wrong, 460. 460. Thank you very much. So it is a profit added here. So we need to do what to subtract? To subtract. Hey, are we together up to here really? Are we together up to here or am I alone? Are we together? Are we together? Great, great, great. Now from there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still trying to peruse through my cash flows or rather my income statement, balance sheet. And whenever I pick something for the sake of my exams, whenever I pick, like now I picked profit before tax, I must tick it in my question paper. You tick it. You tick them, you tick them, because all entries, including the notes to the accounts, whenever I handle some particular note, I must always put a mark there so that I don't, in this case here, again, when I want to make references, I don't have to go back to whatever that I've been able to adjust here. Now, there's a gentleman from there. There's a gentleman from there. What else are we told here? Let's look at this thing very nicely. Very nicely, we are combing it up. We are combing it up. Now I'm looking for any gain. Yes, we have plant with a occurring amount of a, a thousand was sold for 1100. The gain on disposal was uh, recognized in the operating profit. Let me show you something here. Let me show you something here. I know most of you are used to the T accounts. So the T account here, if I was to draw a disposals account, a disposals account, whenever I dispose an asset, I must remove that asset from the PPE by crediting the PPE, by crediting the assets account. And then with that carrying value, netbook value, I bring the netbook value of the disposed asset to the disposals account debit. So we are told here we have an asset that was disposed whose netbook value was a thousand. A thousand. Remember, when I dispose this asset, what am I going to get? Money. They were just your money, isn't it? When I get this money, I debit the bank account. And then I create where? Disposals account. So proceeds. 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 They're telling us in this case that they were able to get 1100. 1100. So then when you weigh this thing, is it going to be a profitable venture or a loss making activity? Did we realize a profit here or a loss? Because now I'm supposed to balance this thing. Again, it's a profit, yes, thank you very much. Because when I come here, I'll be able to see that the credit side is bigger, credit side is bigger, credit side is bigger, the credit side is bigger with 1100, meaning that the balancing figure is coming here. Remember the balancing figure here will go to the income statement. If I'm debiting here, so in the income statement, it will be a credit. And anything that you credit the income statement, that is a gain. So this is a profit on disposal, a profit on disposal of the asset. So remember this profit on disposal must have been booked here. And yet you want to be left with just operating activities. You know, the concept here is that uh, let not members of the company cheat themselves that their company is so profitable, they start paying themselves dividends out of revaluations, they start paying themselves dividends out of uh, things that are not shareable, things that are not shareable. Let them, let them pay themselves dividends out of uh, sales, out of what they are uh, existing to be doing, selling, if it's RCM, we should be able to share our dividends from revenues that we get from our books we sell, from our online courses, from fees we draw from students, right? But if we start selling assets and recognizing the profits and we start sharing that, that will be very wrong. That one will be against the longevity rule. That profit should be booked for that asset to enable you buy other assets in future. So you're right. So in this case, you're coming less, less the profit on disposal, less 
profit on disposal. Less profit on disposal. Less profit on what year on disposal. Profit of how much? Profit of how much? I've wrapped this very fast in the interest of time. So it is a hundred bob, isn't it? It's a hundred bob. Profit on disposal is a hundred bob. You know, this thing also, it's about what year? It's about like memorizing. I remember when I was doing my two paper in ACCA, my two paper in ACCA, I was number 19 globally, right? I know that I'm really bright. I'm never bright. What I know is the exam technique. If there is anybody who understands exam techniques very well, it's me, number one. Number one, exam techniques. For instance, I know regardless of how good a question is, I can't spend more than 40 minutes in any question. I cannot. I'll touch on the things that I'm so sure they are quite easy. I leave that question being that sketchy. I go to another. I make sure in this case that I answer all the theory questions and touch on you'll end up getting an award, even in Kasnip, you'll get an award. Great, so come back here, come back here. Do we have any revaluations? Do we have any revaluations? Because revaluations will normally affect us. Ah, you can see here, some properties were revalued during the year, resulting in revaluation gain of shillings, 800 million, being reported. Ignore the fat tax on devaluation of PPE. But the thing is, there was a revaluation there, a revaluation over how much? There was a revaluation there, a revaluation over how much? Of 800. So this revaluation is not a true profit, really. It's just a movement. So revaluation, revaluation gain. So revaluation gain, ladies and gentlemen, we have 800. We are deducting this. So then what I'll do, I hope you guys have been ticking those things on your papers there. Because what I'll do, I'll skip like two lines here. If anything crops up later, I'll be able to fix them. I'll skip like two lines. I would expect you guys to skip like two or even three lines. Later on, you'll be able to, uh, uh, to, to, to pick these things. So that now you leave, uh, or rather you go to straight away, the working capital changes. So we have here working capital changes. And the working capital, remember, you gave me three things, if you remember. Working capital, you gave me receivables. You gave me receivables. You gave me uh, inventory. I should have begun with inventory, but no harm. Inventory. And then lastly, we have what we call the payables. Lastly, we have what we call the payables. Lastly, we have the payables. So let's start with receivables. Remember receivables, 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 and uh, inventory, it is normally the OC. It's normally the OC, this is OC. Payables is CO. So we start with receivables. So receivables, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have under receivables? Under receivables, I can see the opening receivable. Remember, receivable is OC. I can see the opening receivable here. Opening receivable is 1320, 1560. So it is 1320 for receivable. For receivable, I'm taking 13, 1320 minus 1560. But now remember, you ask yourself, this is not the group, or rather, this is not the cash flow statement that you are doing in CPA intermediate level. CPA intermediate level, it was just a basic one. I could take like that and I'm at home. Here we have got a acquisitions of subsidiaries and the disposal of subsidiaries on the way. So like now I need to ask myself, did I buy any subsidiary in the year? If I bought subsidiary in the year, the acquired subsidiaries receivable has to be put in the opening balance there. Let's see this. Let's see this. Let's see this. So you can see this and gentlemen here, you can see this and gentlemen here, during the year, we can see Razak Limited as at the date of acquisition comprised the following, the net assets. Remember Razak is the one that was acquired. If you remember note number one, we acquired Razak. We acquired Razak. And you can see Razak came with trade receivables of 960. 
Razak came with the receivables of 960. Those receivables of 960 must have gone to boost my stocks. So in this case here, in the opening, in the opening, remember it is opening minus closing. So in the opening, please put 960 there, put brackets minus closing. Be careful with closing. For closing, ladies and gentlemen, you must also ensure that uh, if there was any disposed subsidiary, the disposed subsidiary receivables must also be factored in, must be subtracted because it went with some receivables. So do we have any subsidiary that was disposed? Oh yes, Salama was disposed. Salama was disposed. Remember Salama here, Salama here was disposed. Salama was disposed. Salama was disposed. Does it have receivables? Yes, 480. You can see at the date of disposal, Salama had receivables of 480. So you've got two ways of handling these receivables that were disposed. You can forget this bracket, right? And then you say the disposed receivables were 480 to show negative. Or in this case here, you can come and I don't know which, which I think this approach is even better. 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 So could you kindly give me a figure to put here? Kindly give me a figure to put here. Kindly give me a figure to put here for receivables. If it's negative, we shall take it as a negative. So Galaxy gives me a 240 positive inflow. 240 inflow. Thank you so much. So I want to give you one minute. You try yourselves. You try the inventory figure. Try yourselves the inventory figure. If you get it correct, your lunch today will come from me. Inventory figure. Please remember to factor in the acquired subsidiary and the disposed subsidiary. That working only. That working only. That working only. Share the question. Great. That shows that the students were following. So for inventory, for inventory, I can see the inventory. Inventory, I can see the inventories. I can see the opening is 1740, but for the opening, I must always add the inventory of the acquired. Inventory of the acquired, right? Minus the closing, minus the inventory of the subsidiary that was sold, that was sold. So if you have picked this, I would want to really just come down here in a minute, in a minute, and show you that uh, we have inventories of Rezaki, which came on board of 600. Minus the inventories of Salama of 660 that were sold. So is there somebody who has an answer for us? Is there anybody who has an answer for us? What, remember, it is OCI. It is OCI. And tells me it is minus 200. 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 Right, I can also do it. I can also do it here. So remember for inventory, inventory, it is OC. So the opening for inventory, 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 the for inventory they gave us a figure up here. The opening for inventory is 1740. 1740. 1740 plus the inventory that uh, came with the uh, Razaki. Inventory that came with Razaki was 600 here. Inventory that came with Razaki was 600. Minus the closing, I always like the brackets for whatever reason, you'll have to allow me to be using brackets. So minus the closing, closing inventory for the current year, Closing inventory for the current year is 1880. Closing inventory for the current year is 1880 plus uh, the inventory that uh, went off the radar with this disposal, with the disposal, with the disposal, with the disposal, the disposed one went away with 660. I'll come and add it to this one here, 660 like that. So could you kindly give me the final answer? I like using brackets like that. I like using brackets like that. So Frida tells us zero. Frida tells us zero. Inventory. They're telling us that inventory, 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 inventory. In this case here for, uh, there is no change. I don't know whether that's true. So they're giving me a figure of zero, right? 
They're giving me a figure of zero. They're giving me a figure of zero. So this is what I bring. Ah, which one is zero? Inventory, which one is zero? Please use your brackets. Use body mass. Use body mass. So it is 1740 plus 600. You get that minus open brackets. This plus 660, you close. You close. You please use brackets very well. Use body mass. Use body mass very well. Use body mass very well. Right? So they're getting 200, isn't it? They're getting 200. They're getting 200. Negative value. Negative 200. Thank you so much. So the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is the payables. Is it 200 positive or 200 negative, Naomi? Be very, very keen. Use your body mass very well. Use your body mass very well. Negative, thank you very much. So now go to the payables and give me the last figure. Go to the payables and give me the last figure. Go to the payables and give me the last figure. So ladies and gentlemen, of course, as you do all this, you are getting this great uh, lecture from uh, Dr. J. Aura, who teaches uh, AFR, AFM, AMA, and really each paper in the advanced level, in the advanced level. So I would want to really request you to come and join. Come and join. Come and join this winning team. What are your team about another pick up my tea accounts? No. Join this team. You can never go wrong. This is a winning team, a winning team. A winning team, a winning team. This is a winning team. So the gentleman for payables, remember it is CO. Payables you start with closing. Payables you start with closing. So closing for payables, what do I have here? For payables closing, I can see 3,200. I can see 3,200. So 3,200, remember this is closing, so I must do things in the reverse. So for closing, you will come and add the disposed Payables, you're doing things in reverse. Closing plus the payables of the disposed subsidiary. All right. So in this case here, the disposed subsidiary payables, the disposed subsidiary payables, the disposed subsidiary payables, the disposed subsidiary payables, disposed is number two. It's here, 320, 320. So you add these to the closing. And then you say minus the opening payable. So the opening payable, ladies and gentlemen, opening payable, the opening payable, the opening payable, the opening payable, the opening payable is here. The opening payable is 2,900. So this 2,900, you come always payables. Payables opening are the payables that were acquired to the opening. Payables that were acquired in the opening, are you able to see the payables that were acquired with this new subsidiary? Yes, I can see the trade payables here were 880. 880. So plus 880 like that. 880 like that. So could you kindly give me this answer? Could you kindly give me this answer? Is there somebody who is willing to give me this answer really? So according to Michelle, the last one is supposed to give us 200 watt here, 260. The last one is supposed to give us payables, is supposed to give us 260 negative, 260. I can see still Naomi saying positive, I don't know why. Naomi, you haven't understood the concept of what here, cash flows, you have a problem. Because the moment you miss a sign, that is it, you get a zero. So is this supposed to be positive or negative? Negative, right? Negative, yes. Supposed to be negative like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want us to close this because I'm yet to audit. You know, like in my paper, I normally take whatever I have done. I'm yet to audit this. I don't want to close this. So I would want us to continue with this in our next class, but I also would wish to invite all of you to join our online Zoom revision classes, which are beginning on the 4th of July. And these revision classes, we are going to charge you just 2,000 Kenya shillings for the newcomers. Remember, the old students are not going to pay us anything. This is for the newcomers, newcomers. And the good thing is, if you pay like today, straight out, you start enjoying classes today. It's a very good offer. It's a very good offer. It's a very good offer. So that is it. And please try to market us outside there. The students who are still going for uh, physical classes, I really sympathize with them. They haven't known that our accountancy world has really changed, has moved, has moved. 
has moved. So things are changing. We are operating, we are working online. We are working online. So we need to start studying online. So it has been a pleasure hosting you this afternoon. I believe you have, uh, yes, you can pay in installments. You just get into contact with this lady, then we shall be able to help you. We shall be able to help you. We shall be able to help you. Great. So I'm being asked a very good question here. And, and of course, for the students who are uh, watching this on YouTube, because I upload this on YouTube, you need to subscribe to my channel and share and comment. I need to get a bigger audience. This man should be teaching in Harvard, isn't it? We shall overcome. Great. So they're asking, they are very good questions.